All right, Shalom Israel. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lek out there, doing his work of faith, and labor of love, and true sincerity. All right, you know, um, you know, as you can see on the screen, you know, uh, it's the brother's video from G GMS. Behold, I come quickly. Uh, you know, if you faint now, your strength is small. Okay, and um. Hey, you know, I just want to do a uh, short uh, response to this little willingness. You know, it's edifying. You know, um, and this the video that this brother did. You know, it was a beautiful, beautiful video. You know, it was definitely all in the spirit. Um, you know, I myself was talking to a brother as well earlier. You know, and um, just chopping up just about catching hell and so on and so forth, man. So it's, it's definitely all in the spirit. It's all in the right season, man. You know, and um. You know, because this first scripture he brought out here, you know, uh, Proverbs 24 and 10, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. And, you know, here it's talking about, well, if you completely fall out, you know, that your faith is, is very small. Why? Because, you know, we, we're at the end of this thing, you know. We are facing the, we are facing the days of adversity, you know. The, the kingdom is not right around the corner anymore. The kingdom is right in front of our face. You know, all we have to do is take a few more strides in, in this race, man. You know, a, a few more strides, a few more feet in this race. And Lord willing, we home, man. That's all it's going to take, you know. So why fall out now? You know, ultimately, we know if men do fall out it's because they weren't part of the elect, you know. And that's why we're striving, you know, to, to build our faith up, that we can truly be rooted and booted in this thing, you know, and truly be called the beloved of the Lord, you know, truly be uh, the Israel of the Mosah, you know, the Israel of God, that elect, you know. So, you know, pretty much getting into this, you know, uh, this is the book of uh, Jonah, chapter 2, verse 7. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. You know, so this is the difference with, you know, men that fall out and a man of the Lord, you know, that remembers when they get weak that they shouldn't hesitate to pray unto the Lord. Because in Proverbs 24 and 10, this is the, the average guy, whether it's a bug out or just a straight up fall out or just straight up reprobate, this is the difference. His faith was small because why? He didn't think to call upon the Lord. And ultimately, he wasn't part of the elect. But in Jonah's case, he said what? When my soul fainted, when Jonah got weak within him, that he remembered the Lord. And what did he remember to do? To pray. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. So when brothers are going through these different situations of hell, you know, this is the same points in which the brother, you know, uh, was getting into that you cannot forget to pray unto the Lord, you know, praying unto the Lord. That's our first defense, you know, against the wickedness of this world and against these deep, these different uh, uh, spirits that are constantly trying to attack us, you know, to will us out of the way of understanding. OK, we have to constantly remember that and be on our spiritual P's and Q's, you know, with our prayers, you know, because we looking forward to what that everlasting life and that that heavenly rest but we can't get to that unless we constantly go through these different temptations these trials and these afflictions man you know so this hell that we're going through is all for the benefit of us to build us up in the spirit you know so real quick this is the book of uh ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 3 says sorrow is better than laughter for by the sadness of the countenance the heart is made better now why is sorrow better than laughter because what when you're laughing you know you're not really taking the time out to think upon the things in which you know uh you or whoever you're joking around with uh the, the any spiritual points about it you might not be thinking that deep just because you're laughing and have a jolly old time but when you're sorrowing when you're catching hell you're in a state of mourning what your heart is going to be made better because you're meditating upon your hell you're trying to extrapolate spiritual jews out of every situation and what you're going through you know to see why you went through the situation okay how did the situation occur 
what can you gain out of the situation to move forward from the situation that it's not a hindrance unto your spirit but that it was actually of a benefit of why you went through this hell so brothers gotta remember each and every piece of hell in which we go through whether it be you know uh the monetary hell whether it's the woman the job so on and so forth every situation is different you know the most I, as I said, the most I want you to catch them spiritual Jews, man. You know, and only you can do that, and only will your heart be made better by you meditating upon these things, you thinking upon these things. You know, because whether you see it or why you went through it right after, uh, you know, hours later, a day later, a week later, or a few months later, eventually the most I is going to show you. You know, in due time, why you went through the situation and what you're supposed to gain from the situation. You know, that's how the most works, most how it works. It works in mysterious ways, but it's all towards our benefit, okay? So, this is the book of um, Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 5. And ye have forgotten, uh, Slaki, I'm going to start there. Went into, um, yeah, Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 10. For verily, for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure this is talking about what our earthly fathers okay our earthly fathers chastened us after their own pleasure in the way they they wanted us to go but he for our profit but yahweh bashim shot is chastened us for it, our profit so that we can be the chosen of the lord so that we can be the righteous men that we should be okay for the benefit of our souls for the benefit of our salvation man okay so it says that we might be partakers of his holiness so that we can be one again with the heavenly father okay because now we have the heavenly father but it's like we're at a distance so we're looking for that love and that approval again from our heavenly father man you know to be on one accord with them truly as it was in the, in the beginning before all things were created because the elect were on one accord with the heavenly father and with the son you know so it says verse 11 now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous okay and that's how it is when you're going through the hell you can only really think about what you're going through at the moment as it gets into in the book of Sirach, uh real quick Sirach chapter 11 and um 25 and the day of prosperity there's a forgetfulness of affliction and in the day of affliction there's no remembrance of prosperity so that's exactly how it is when it says no now no chastening for the present seeming to be joyous but grievous you're not thinking about you know the good old days you know what i'm saying when you was eyed or whatever the case may be all you can really see is that hell okay and what you're going through at the moment but it says what nevertheless so that's like a but there but afterward after you go through that hell it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby so we're you know we're in the spiritual army of yahweh bashim yahweh hopefully that spiritual army of that 144,000. so we're being we're in boot camp we're being trained we're being trained we're being exercised by the afflictions in the hell in which we go through hoping that it can yield us peaceable fruit of righteousness out of every different situation the most i could put you through a monetary situation you know to test your faith you know most i can put you through uh, another situation to test your anger to test your patience you know it's different spiritual jews okay and levels of understanding in which the most i want us each to reach as individuals for our walk so that we can be built up how he wants us to be built up so that we can withstand for the battle with that great day and that's what we do this for man you know so and because you know as i was saying because it's like we at a distance you know from the lord you know from our family which is yahweh and yahweh shah so we in the army we trying to fight you know these different spirits off to get back to our loved ones you know the heavenly father and the son it's like we're on a stranded island you know and in this in this big place it's a million people on this island you know but only few people you know really know what it takes to get off this island and to get to where they need to be and that's the those of the hopeful elect man you know every day we fighting 
for the love of Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. That's what we're doing this for, man. So we don't have time to be fainting and falling by the wayside, man. You know? This is the fight for our salvation. And we got to constantly have that hunger for our salvation so that we can return and have that love that we had in the beginning, you know, from our big brother and our heavenly father, man. Okay? So, you know, because uh, being in, in this world, you know, it's no real comfort in this world that we have except for these scriptures, you know, knowing that the Lord is with us in spirit and in truth, okay? So, uh, this is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 35, and I started uh, verse 16. He that serveth the Lord shall be accepted with favor, and his prayer shall reach unto the clouds. Okay, that's what, like in the, in the case of Jonah, you know, when he remembered the Lord, you know, then what he, he prayed and his prayer came into uh, the Most High's Holy Temple. Okay. And it says, verse 17, the prayer of the humble pierces the clouds until it come nigh. He will not be comforted. What? When Jonah was in the, in the, in the belly uh, of that big fish, you think he was comforted until the Most High came through for him? No, nah, he wasn't. You know? That's why he knew he had to pray unto the Most High to get him out of that situation. And afterwards, he was truly comforted. Okay? So it says, The prayer of the humble pissed at the clouds until it come nigh. He will not be comforted and will not depart till the Most High shall be hold to judge righteously and execute judgment. You know, so as I said, the only comfort you know, that we have here now is these scriptures, you know, uh, uh, the brotherhood and knowing that Yahweh Bashmi Yahushua is what they say in spirit and truth. But we're not going to ultimately be comfort into the Most High what uh, executes judgment righteously upon this whole earth as we know it. You know, and Lord willing, we be a part of that elect. That's when we'll be truly and utterly comforted, man. You know, as, as I said, when we have fought this great fight. And we have received, you know, the love once again as we had in the beginning from our big brother and our heavenly father, you know. So, real quick, going into, uh, <clears throat> this is the book of uh, Lamentations, chapter 3. Um, and I start at verse 18. And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. So we have another situation where what a man said that he was weak in uh, Lamentations, I believe, yeah, uh, by Jeremiah. And I said, my strength and my hope is purged from the Lord. So he was weak at this point when he was speaking this, okay? Remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. So he was thinking upon what? His misery and his affliction, the wormwood and the gall. And basically what? How bitter it was, you know? My soul have them still in remembrance, all that affliction is still in his mind, and it is and is humbled in me. Okay, so what? That's a that's a, one of the pieces of a, a, a peaceable fruit. You being humbled by your afflictions, because the word affliction means to strike. So when we're going through the afflictions, the Most High is striking us down in order to what humble us. That's a piece of peaceable fruit there, you know. And what we get when we uh, go through these uh, afflictions and, you know, different hell, man. That's a part of this thing, you know. So it says, my soul have them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I call, I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. So after Jeremiah was experiencing all this hell, you know, he's getting weak, you know, thinking upon his affliction, you know, and he was humbled. Now here comes the but. But this I recall to my mind, therefore I have I hope. This is just in, this, in the same thing with uh, Jonah. Matter of fact, let me um go back to that real quick. Just to uh, bring that, the point back. Just to show how them points link up. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. Okay? So it's like that but in between. Even though you don't literally see it, it's like that but. Because you got to put yourself in this position. At the moments when we get weak. You know, you just thinking upon your affliction, thinking upon your affliction, but that's Satan trying to get you not to think upon the Lord when you're thinking upon that affliction so hard. So when your soul gets weak, then here comes that up. Oh, I know what to do because you start to think it upon the Lord. So this is the same situation, basically not the same situation, but 
the same mind frame that Jonah and Jeremiah were in when they spoke in these passages. Okay, so it said, this I recall to mind, therefore I have our hope. So when he was going through the hell, he recalled uh, uh, the Lord, okay, in his mind. It is of the Lord's mercies, okay, that we are not consumed, okay, because his compassions fell not. So Jeremiah just happened to remember that, whoa, the Lord is a merciful power. That's why in the old times, we wasn't consumed by all the other nations. That's why, you know, the kings of old and the prophets of old, they weren't consumed. Okay, we were taken down, we were beaten, you know, under slavery on these different nations. But we were never fully consumed because what the Lord has compassion upon his people based upon, you know, the prophecies and the covenant where he set with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, that's why his compassions and his mercies fell not, you know, it says they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him. Okay, so through all Jeremiah going through all of this, when he recalled the Lord's mercies, his compassions, and he thought how great that the most High is. He said, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him so what his strength was increased his faith was increased by the hell and the afflictions of which he was catching so this is the mind frame in which we all have to have with as i got into with the book of hebrews when we go through those uh, different afflictions we supposed to uh gain some spiritual jews out of that therefore ultimately increasing our faith increasing our, our patience our humility you know, everything that is righteous unto the Lord, we're supposed to be increasing this for the battle with a great day, for dealing amongst the brotherhood, so on and so forth, man. You know, some main different examples to get into. Um, and real quick, this is the book of uh, <clears throat> Genesis, chap I'm like not Genesis, uh, Galatians chapter 6 and 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not so let us not be weary and well doing okay let us not get faint doing this work of the lord let us not get faint you know and as we walk in, in in this world of wickedness and let not the world overtake us but let us constantly be reminded that what as the brother was getting into we have to constantly make our lives a living sacrifice you know through whatever hell you catching never let nothing get your spirit down to where the point where you're completely out of the spirit you're going to have the moments where you may not be in the spirit as you want to but that's just them demons messing with your head for a time period but you fight through that by by prayer man you know you constantly fight through that by prayer because the most i wants to see that great fight man so we have to put up that fight non-stop 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 and when you putting up that fight you sacrificing for the brotherhood you making it to camp week in and week out you trying to put up videos on, on a regular basis and the most hot sees that you fighting off them different spirits that are trying to attack you trying to attack your soul that's when the most high kicks in and says you know ah that's my son right there you know he he's pleasing me he he's striving for perfection he's striving for my love he's striving to get back to me He's, he's striving for my love the lord takes joy in that man you got to know that through the spirit if you know your heavenly father okay then you know that's how the most high works man you know because of his compassions and his mercy on his people when you look at the different examples throughout the scriptures you realize that you know and um and it says let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not so you know us enduring until the end and you know our faith increasing not decreasing you know that's when all our work and, and effort we're going to get paid for that in the end man you know for everything that we do amongst the brotherhood the most High is going to look out for us on, on that end but in the end you know we don't want our consolation on this side we want our consolation in the kingdom you know to, to make it into the kingdom and, and part of being weary not being part of not being weary and well doing is being there for the brothers you know whether if it's monetarily um you know uh having you know to talk to brothers on the phone 
you know, about different situations to try to build brothers' faith up, whether it's having to do sit-down lessons with brothers, you know, to try to keep them in the spirit, you know, so on and so forth, to build them up. That's all a part of not being weary and well-doing, you know, because Yahweh Shah said, uh, he who wants to be uh, greatest amongst you, you know, he has to be the servant to all of you, roughly paraphrasing. So whether if you're, you're a camp leader, uh, a brother that's or brothers that's ahead of a camp, so on and so forth, you have to remind yourself that I'm a servant unto the younger brothers that are underneath me, man. You know, and, and it's a joy to serve your brothers, man. It's a, it's a joy to do that. Whatever you can do for the brotherhood, you should be willing to do that and not feign at doing that. Because we remember that we're doing this for the love for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and for the brotherhood and because we know that we would want the same kindness to be shown unto us in return you know so you know brothers just going through the cell constantly keeping in your minds you know to never let nothing get you down and our faith is supposed to be waxing stronger because of the times in which we're facing you know so Hey man, don't faint in 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 the day of adversity, and don't faint now, man. You know, Lord willing, keep them prayers up, and you know, brothers, just stay strong, man. So, you know, I hope this uh, segment was edifying, you know, and um, I like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, the Bwanis of the Apostles and the Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the Lek out there, doing this regular faith and labor of love and truth, sincerity, Shalom.